Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. A special kit today. That's because it's a video game. Video killed the radio star. Do, 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 don't know the words. I'm very excited about this because I do like to play video games. Um, I got this off the eBay. And it's snazzy because it even has a whole, pew, 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 you know, enclosure. I was just trying to think of the right words there and say, well, yeah, I guess it is an enclosure. By Geek Tech Techies. Techies. Greek Geek Techies. Geek Tech Um And it says, direction, direction. Return, okay, not much on here. An STC 15 F2K 60S2. I think we've seen that before, that I see uh, on a few things. It's a, a kind of a Far East MCU. I'm not sure which system it's based on, well, you know, but it was a, it's one of those older chips, like one of the, based on copy of one of those Intel ones. This is the console electronic DIY kit with four games, with four games, 51, Single chip computer game. What? I'm not making this up. Let's work this out together, guys. With four games, 51 single chip computer game, enough energetic with a buzzer, with a game background sound, digital tube real time score, that mm, you can get how many points? Simple interface, keystroke, field design. More classic, more comfortable as a gift. It's also very helpful. Hmm. With four games, four in one menu switch, bring your own game background music. The experience effect is better. The backlight is adjustable and the background music is turned off. <sighs> Just reading it through. There's not really much instruction here, but it does say here what the games were. Tetris Snake F1 Racing Car Airplane. So power supply, charging treasure, cell phone, charging head, computer, USB, battery box. Oh, I see. It's saying you can you can use all those mechanisms, I suppose. Well, the first thing we're going to do is just take off this because it's always the most horrible job. And it's utterly, utterly mind-numbingly bad sometimes if it doesn't come off nicely. Phew, here it's not too bad. If it's a complicated laser cut piece with lots of nooks and crannies, the paper almost always rips. And then you might have to even get out the old label remover. That's not too bad though, all in all. The reason it's on there, it's to protect obviously the shiny surface, but also depending on the color of the plastic, the laser cutter might not penetrate it. So I'm gonna just put this on the side, just off camera onto that amazing instruction book. Come on, let's do this. Jump cat, Andrew, jump cat. No, curse you. You're gonna experience the pain with me. All right, so that's this is a good example where you've got one where it doesn't want to go. What do we do? Guess we just persevere. Keep finding another corner until, until you can get a edge of a fingernail under it. That was all right. It's fine, isn't it? And again. A big old peel. Yes, result. Not too bad. Now, I'm guessing we're gonna be able to put this on afterwards. Famous last guess. Let's have a look at the components. Gonna get the old soldering iron on as well. Is that actually permanent? Oh, that's quite nice though. At least the battery box can sit on there permanently. I'm kind of tired of electric, electronic kits, electric, electric kits. Having, um, having battery boxes on remotes is driving me nuts. So you've got a switch and a USB. Um, is that a mini or a micro? Looks a bit old school, whatever, whichever one it is. We won't be using it though, will we? We're gonna pop batteries in this. Let's see, I think we're going to put these on first because they look like the most painful. Direction. So there is a little white marker there. You can see that on the board there. And if you look here, there is a little, uh, I thought I saw it. There you go. A little dimple right there. So I'm guessing 
that's the direction you want and sometimes there can be components that need to go on before these so just check the design there's nothing underneath here so I think we're okay but ask me how I've been done by that before in the past Let's get the other one I do like a good Tetris game so I'm sure this will not disappoint so let's push that down and put some pressure on there I quite like this black PCB black gloss I always go for the blue myself and I'm just doing all the corners so now the corners are done I don't know how easy it is to see on camera I'm just going to whiz through all these and if you're watching from America I mean whiz in the kind of UK sense of zooming around not in the getting my willy out and weeing all over the PCB that comes later if it doesn't go well look at that that's doing good isn't it it's a quick quick old job that isn't it quicker than expected so that battery box though is one of those things that's going to need some consideration let's have a quick look at this because there's the tack switches under it as well so and I like this particularly bent up legs oh yeah so we'll put that in last after the switches basically and then it's got a little bit of adhesive tape some clone 3m let's get our controls in our d-pad and stuff oh hello oh dear are oh, you silly creatures let's check this oh they've okay so if you look at the switches you might need to do something about it you'll see focus there's a little dimply thing going on there and those dimples have not been made on the board though these do say omron i wonder if these are genuine omron ones interesting um it looks like they have tried to cut those off for you but they've not done a great job so depending on how nice you want those to sit you might want to take a dremel to them or a little file and then just attack them I'm uh, I'm kind of impatient and I really don't see me caring too much about that so I'm gonna rush ahead oh although look that one is particularly bad I'm just let me get them all in if there's any that are really bad I'll sort those out individually because that is bad that's a shame though isn't it I wonder why um why that happened I suspect they must have sourced the switches from somewhere else yeah this one's hardly been done Oh, and if they did it that way, the way I just did it, from the edge, I reckon you'd get nearly all of it off. I'm going to make an example of this one. There we go. That's so flat. After you've experienced true fat, Morty. I'm going to solder these from the top first to make sure they all sit where I want them. Because I can... Come on now. So was that bit if you use the very tip of the soldering iron? It's never quite right. So you have one of those little teeny tiny soldering irons. So that's looking all pretty good. Let's flip that over now and actually just finalise that soldering. So you can see how much trouble you'd have soldering this up if you'd connected the battery box first. Come on now, there you go, play the game. God, I can't wait to hear the sounds. Let's 
it really uh, made a big deal about those. How are you supposed to do your own background effects then? I wonder if there's uh, some sort of DC jack you could attach. And the fact it's got USB on it, we'll check that later, but we'll see if the USB has enough pins that it could be a data connection. Maybe you can reprogram it. These are taking some soldering. A bit more than expected, to be honest with you. Maybe the old PCB could have done with a little clean. Or maybe a couple of degrees more hotter on the old soldering iron, but it ain't going anywhere now. So I'm guessing that's uh, an in-circuit programmer of some description there. VG01 Bell, it says. So it shows here on the back the buzzer. Makes you wonder though, would the buzzer fit there? I suspect. I would love it to fit on the front. But I suspect it won't because, oh, I don't know. It might, you know. Let's just see. Another, you don't want a piece of crap jutting out, sticking into your fingers on the back, do you? You can avoid it. Right, I know, I'm aware I'm putting these keycaps on before I've soldered on those couple of last capacitors, but just keen to see. We do have an LCD display to go on as well. I think we'll test it all before we put it in the case. And there's our switch has to go on here. That sticks out from the side, so that's not too bad. Digging into your hand, just where you want it. So that's the test now though, is to put that plastic bit on. Yeah, I think that speaker is definitely for the back. Alas, no use crying over spilt milk. So there is a positive and negative on that, so we'll put it around the correct way. It says bell here though. That will do. get that switch on while we still remember. So that one is going to be very difficult to put any solder in from the top so I'm going to try though just on one side if I can get away with it because it will make life a touch easier. Nope. It's so hot. So hot it's cool. Come on now. Surprisingly delicate. I wonder why there's so many pins. Less surprisingly though is its lack of wanting to be bloody soldered. Got it. That was tricky. That was Way more tricky than it ought to be. Joy of joys though, we do have a USB to solder. But, and I always, always, always wished I had designed this. When I've designed things with USB, be it micro, mini or whatever, right? I don't really see a distinction between those two things. You always have the format option of using a surface mount or a through hole. And it's really super rare, as in I've never done it. I've always wanted to use the through hole, but I just can never bring myself to it because it costs more money on your bill of materials. Um, and they're always harder to get, harder to source than a 
surface mount one. It's so always put the surface mount, but they are a really nightmare to hand solder in small batch work. So if you've got the choice, consider the through hole one, or maybe dual footprint it if you can. Just bet you can't. Now I'm really so annoyed about the way that that's not taking up solder. I'm just going to put a touch of flux on that remaining area just on the hope that it will wick down the solder. Let's try again. Yeah, there we go, that did work. So it's just a bit dirty. That's our four pins there. So we just have our capacitors. Plus and minus. Little ceramic. Just got to squeeze that little ceramic in there. The holes for it. Oh my gosh, I think there's a mistake on the drawing. Oh. It, it barely, the leg of the component can barely get through the holes. That's how tight it is. It's like the drill holes have been made like <laughs> way too small. Never seen that before. I just thought everybody just used a standard, kind of reasonably large drill hole for stuff. Not today. Okay, let's get that in. Splayed out the legs. I know it's not my style normally, but I just want to get it working now. I feel we spent like what ten minutes looking at this now. Maybe 20, could be longer. Now's the time for this just to, to be done with. I want that instant gratification. So, just the screen. Just the screen and the battery and we're away. Pins unbent. Got a whole box of these somewhere. Not necessarily this size, although I think they are similar. Elf 7 segment and a whole tube of drivers for them. I keep meaning to do something with it, but today that's that God, I hope one of those hasn't gone in my coffee that's ping, pinging all around the back office right last bit let's get this unbent before I take the old adhesive off I'm going to start struggling. That's spring steel. So they, they, they took some effort to bend those and have them stay bent. Must be the same spring steel that the battery contact is made out of itself. Come on now. There we go. Nice job. Are there even holes? Yes, that's nice. And they have some nuts and bolts in there, so I wonder if they... Um, and they are countersunk. That is really nice touch, to be honest with you. Can't see any other reason for them to include these. I might just go ahead, before I solder it, and fit that, because that is very nice. Really, well done. Well done, guys. That's really quality. I can't... Um, I'm, I'm actually really surprised about that. Crikey! You've got adhesive and you've got a nut and a bolt each. What more could you want, possibly, in a fixing solution for that? That's pretty quality. This is a, a good old kit. Again, I'll put some links down below, or links to the kit. But I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't mega money, right? I don't think it was more than a tenner. 
Might have been cheaper than that. Now one thing I am aware we're going to have to do though, is we are going to have to chop the excess spring steel from those connectors when we uh, get to that point. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm just wondering if I've got my cheaper side cutters around somewhere. I don't really fancy ruining my side cutters. I might just, I'll do a very ginger test, but right, remember this steel here from the battery things can damage your side cutters, okay? So don't use your best ones. We'll just use part of your side cutter blade that you're, oh yeah, see, that's, that's a problem. Let's solder them first. Although maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Cut, let's cut them first. If you solder them first and then struggling to cut that, you might pull out the via. Let's use something a little bit bigger. These are aviation snips. And even there, I'm struggling to get a good purchase on that. Ah, curse your wiry ways. Dagnamit. How I did that was too rude to show on film. Suffice to say, my favorite side cutters now have a big dimple out of the side of their teeth. Not sure what caused that. Let's pretend it didn't happen. So I added a bit of extra heat there. You can see some blobs of solar get away. So that is, in effect, the whole unit set up now. We just need some batteries. Oh, I just happen to have three random cells. Probably got some juice in them. This is still hot in my hand. I can feel the heat of the PCB. Woo! Oh, hello. <laughs> what is that? Oh. It looks like a speaker, doesn't it? What does that mean? Four, three, two, one. I wonder if this benefit of a, you know, like a dark black piece of plastic on it. But let's have a go. <laughs> oh, it was playing. A, it was playing a lot worse when the music was playing. Oh, yes. Getting carried away now. That's a not a bad version of Tetris, to be honest with you. Yep, I could definitely just sit here playing this. You might want to tune out. Nah, not really. I'm just going to have another. I want another two rows. Bang. And there's your score. Look, six. I'd play with the uh, power, though, a little bit. Oh, we can't. So what they're doing is they're modulating the screen. So as you see, there's no uh, resistors to the LCD. So probably in software, you could adjust that. OK, well, that was all right, wasn't it? Game two. Snake. Oh my god, that music! Whew. Imagine you were like on a train or something trying to play this. Now look at the screen. The target LED is actually a bit brighter, so they're, they're probably pulsing that twice as fast as the body of the snake. It's nicely done. It's not bad at all, actually, is it? It's pretty good. How do you exit the game? No, maybe just off and on might be quicker. Oh, you've got a car at the bottom of the screen. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, boy. Oh, okay. Art imitates life. Oh, that looks cool as hell. It's hard to, to see in the camera, but that is bright. It's cool. It looks like a laser.
Yeah, I'm clearing the meteors here. So I'm getting carried away. I should finish the build, shouldn't I? Um, that's nice. <laughs> I'm really quite pleased with that. Right, so before we go any further, let's look at what we've got. We've got standoffs here. And a few nutty bolty bolty bolts. And I can see from the case there's one, two, four holes. One, two, three, four. So we do seem to have an awful lot of these, but we have four. Okay, so what's going to go through? We're going to have one go through like that, and then something go through like that. Wow, that's awesome! If that's doing what I think it is, that means that all the uh, battery bay and everything also get enclosed. Good. Or I've put these on the wrong way, and that means I'm going to have to undo them all. But I'm going to go with the assumption that I've done this the right way. Now I really am wondering what I could use for a bit of filter for the screen because that would make this so much more usable if you've got like some dark film. Let's have a think while I've got that. Oh! I think I might have some vinyl tint. I might see if we got some of that later. Some vinyl tint. You know the type you want to put on your car to give it that bad look. The one the police tell you to take off. Right, that's good. So I'm just going to have a quick blow, just because there's a lot of dust and crap on there and it will scratch our nice plastic, won't it? Yeah, that's nice. Ooh, that is that nice. And there was me worrying about my mounting the speaker and it being a bit nasty because the speaker would be poking through but it's not poking anybody it's hidden away the only thing i would maybe consider doing is cutting the volume control sorry the on off switch uh stick down a bit purely because i don't think it needs to be that long to be operated and it might not it might stab in your hand but Looking at this, this plastic thing looks like it extends further than the switch, so it won't be stabbing the hand. Someone's designed this, guys. I'm uh, I'm totally shocked. Despite the instructions being a little bit glib, um, this is actually really good. Well done. Woohoo! Right. Then we've got that to do. But before I do, let me just go and have a quick look for some film. Let's turn this on, see if it makes any difference. Oh, so you can see right away quite a difference, can't you, really? And if you doubled it over, would that work? Double looks quite good to my eye, but not so good on the camera. We can go with, um, hmm, let's go with one piece then, shall we? Oh, no, we're going to go with double. <laughs> Screw you at home. I'm going to be playing this. Um, and to that end, we'll find a little scissors. You can decide how well you want to apply this film, really. You can uh, do a proper job. It's a bit dusty. So I'm going to cut, um, I mean it's up to you, you could probably vinyl tint this whole whole thing. I'm just going to go for that piece in the middle way. I'm going to cut one, I think is probably about right. Okay, I'm going to put this big old roll away before it uh, unravels itself. Again, it's not like cheap stuff, but it's not dear stuff. And in the sort of quantities you're going to be buying, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, you could always consider buying extra and uh, doing your car or something with it. Don't do your front screen though. They don't like that. <laughs> so I'm going to, just, I'm just rubbing it on my knee. You can't see me rubbing it on my knee. I just, was just trying to get off the dust so let's take off the films from here because that's going to be eating some of the brightness isn't it let's 
then I'm going to double over this. Get that. Not that it wants to be doubled over, so I'm going to cut it. I don't want the grown-ups to hear me. So just cutting this out. Of course, if you were doing this, I would expect you to do a lot better job, a lot nicer than that. But I don't know, it's just a proof of concept bloody fingerprints on it. It's just like a mobile phone <laughs> screen. Whatever. Whatevs. That's fine. Let's pop that on there. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I'm just trying to align these buttons and it kind of sprung sprung out on me. Tried to attack me, it did. Right. And then the last screw holes. I'll turn it on while I'm doing that, just in case. I'm curious to see. Yeah, I can see through the screen there. It's smoky. My hope is that I can run a knife around the edge of that screen. Do, 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 do. It's a fair attempt, isn't it? It's a fair attempt at this Tetris tune. Oh, what was that? So I've got my snazzy contrast control now. Look, I can change my contrast and brightness. So let's just say with and without, yeah? Maybe I can even get a second layer. So you've got the different options there. Um, yeah, I think behind the acrylic, I think one is fine. But it's definitely worth having. Um, so yeah, look out for some of that. And I think it definitely needs a bit of a trim, I reckon. I reckon I can slide that in after the fact. Let's have a go, shall we? And then we'll be done. Totally done. Yeah, that works. Just trim it off. Now what you can do with this sort of film, of course, it is sort of slightly sticky. Um, it will actually, uh, how you do it normally, it's like a transfer. You will wet the window and you'll rub it on the uh, glass of your car and it kind of just sticks. So you could do that here, but yeah, I think that's it. That's done. That's a good job. Oh, this this but right button is permanently fixed too. So just loosen this till I hear it click. Not good. That's better. There, it's fine adjustable it's done it's adjusted so would you buy one of these what's your price for one of these i know bearing in mind you can buy these sorts of games for next to nothing yeah pulling to the left now that button's jammed we'll need some tuning and some washers but there you go hope uh, that's of some use to you please come and ping me on discord if you want any more information about anything i do and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified in future projects and kits. As ever, thanks for watching.
Yes. <laughs>